This video is a goodness of fit test. Alright, so a goodness of fit test just describes if the distribution is the same or if it's different. So you're always going to be given relative frequencies or probabilities or percentages of things occurring. Alright, so the, our scenario goes that we're wondering if the distribution of the age of mothers has changed since 1990. We know that we have ages 15 to 19, 20 to 24, all the way to 44. And we are given that the probability or the relative frequency of each age group. Alright, and this was in 1990. Now, someone has observed um, 500 new mothers and found their ages. What we want to do is see if the distribution has changed since 1990. So this is a goodness of fit test. You're always going to be given probabilities and the observations. Now, we always need to make sure that our assumptions are met. And in this case, we got to find the expected values, which is E equals N, the sample size, times P, the probability. Since we have six different sets of data, we're going to have six different expected values. Like I said, N is the total of our observed is 500. P is a probability or relative frequency. So we're just trying to figure out how many out of the 500 would we expect to be 15 to 19 years of age. So we say 0 .086 times 500, and we get 43. Um, 0.265 times 500 is 132.5. 0 .305 times 500 is 152.5. 0 .228 times 500 is 114. 0 .096 times 500 is 48 and 0 .02 times 500 is 10. Now, the assumptions are met because all of these expected values are greater than 1. And remember, we only can have 20% that are less than 5, and we have 0% that are less than 5. So the assumptions are met. Since the assumptions are met, we still have those six basic steps. We have the null and the alternative being the first step. Remember that the null is in the goodness fit test is that the distribution is the same. So the distribution of ages is the same as 1990. The alternative then would be that it's different. The distribution of ages is different from 1990. Now, of course, I'm going to have to erase some of our information. All right, second step is our alpha, and we're going to test at the 5% significance level. So alpha equals 0.05. Step three is our test statistic. This time, since it's goodness of fit test, it's a chi-squared value. To find that, the chi-squared is the summation of O minus E squared divided by E. O minus E, O is the observed, what we're given, E is the expected, what we calculated. So we have to subtract each of them, square it, and then divide by our E. So we're going to have six things that we're going to have to find and then add them all up. So O minus E, 58 minus 43 is 15. 15 squared is 225 and then we divide this number by 43 and we get 5.2326. 5.2326. Always round it to four decimal places so you'll get the value that we need. Four decimal places. All right, I'm quickly going to write, write this down. The next one would be negative 275, 756.25, and then 5.7075. Negative 24.5, 600.25, and divide that by 152.5, we get 3.9361. 131 minus 114 is 17. 17 squared is 289. 289 divided by 114 is 9. 
I'm sorry, is 2.5351. 69 minus 48 is 21. 21 squared is 441. 441 divided by 48 is 9.1875. 9 minus 10 is negative 1. Negative 1 squared is 1. 1 divided by 10 is 0.1. Now, we're not quite done. What we want to do is add up now all of these values. The O minus E all squared divided by E. So when we add all this up, you get 26.6988. And that is our step 3. So I'm going to erase all of this. So our step three, our chi-squared value is what we get when we add this together, which is 26.6988. All right, let's look at the critical value approach. Just like the T table, we need degrees of freedom. The degrees of freedom of a goodness of fit test is how many variables do we have minus one. Remember that there were six age groups, so that's how many variables we have. Six age groups minus one is five. Critical value looks at our alpha. Alpha, remember, was 0 0.05. We want to know degrees of freedom of five, what is the chi-squared value that has 0 0.05 in the tail? We go to our table, and you should see that that is 11.070. Now, step five is always, with our critical value, it is the chi-squared value that we just found in step three in the non-rejection or the rejection region. Well, 26 is larger than 11, so it's definitely in the rejection region, so we reject. If we were to do the p-value, well, what we're going to do, look at degrees of freedom of 5 on the chi-squared table. You're looking for the number 26.6988. Well, we can see that there is no number even as large as this. We also see that area is getting smaller and smaller as our chi-squared values are getting larger. So all we can tell is that p is less than 0 .005, which is our smallest area. All right, either way you do this, you're going to see that P is less than alpha or that our critical value, our chi-squared is larger than our critical value. So we're going to reject. If we reject using the critical value approach, all we have to do is say that we got enough evidence. If we use the p-value and reject, we also have to put the evidence against the null. So at the 5% significance level, the data do provide sufficient evidence to conclude that the distribution of ages differs from 1990. I've run out of room, so I'll just state the p-value. If we reject with the p-value, we have to put the evidence. So the evidence against the distribution being the same as 1990 is very strong. So again, the evidence against the distribution being the same as 1990 is very strong. That concludes the chi-squared goodness of fit test.